Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use lighting and shadows to create this neat effect. All right, so we go ahead and we have our player here. Now I've gone ahead and I've just changed. I'm using my day night, obviously, uh, project that we used. And to do this, I just went ahead and I just went over to my player, add a player light. And that is just a point light 2D. And I've added it and it's just right here in the middle of my player. As you can see here, and over on the right hand side, we can see that one of the things we're going to need is a texture. That way we can see it. And we could use a standard texture like this. All you need is um, some kind of image. Now, I'm going to go with a solid white, of course, and I'm going with something round because I want kind of that omni light kind of look, right? Because it makes sense when you're going to have like a campfire or a torch or something. Now, you can see it kind of looks a little bluish because all we're really doing is lightening this nighttime color. All right, so if we were to run this, we can see that's, that's all we're kind of getting. We're just kind of lightening up the area. So already we're kind of getting that light effect. Now yours won't be pulsating. I'll show you how to do that uh, when we get to the code. Uh, assuming that is something that you want to do. And you can go ahead and adjust the texture scale on that if you feel you need to over here in the inspector. And we're going to come on down, light 2D, enabled is on. Of course, makes sense. Now for this, I'm going to go ahead and go into my color and change my energy as well. And for my color, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go with an orangey yellow, a golden yellow, something, something in that range. Something that looks good for kind of a flame. Uh, I'm going to go maybe something around there. And for my energy, now if you want, if you like uh, the look of it the way it is now, you can go ahead and leave it. I'm going to go ahead and change my energy here to four. And if we take a look, we can see that's kind of made things a lot brighter, a lot kind of weirder to look at. Not going to be, uh, not going to lie there, right? And then we have blend modes, subtract, mix, and add. I'm going to be adding in this case. And we want to cast shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and turn shadow on. And we can see immediately uh, this stuff is getting cut out. And the reason why this stuff is getting it cut out is because these have light occluders. Now, I just have a bunch of light occluder 2D nodes here just kind of thrown into my scene for all my objects. Uh, that I want to demonstrate this with but if you have this set up with a tile map or something or a separate scene you can either add it to your scene or add it to each tile on your tile map that you want this on so it's not a big deal and then you're going to select a color for this shadow now this shadow could be any color you want as you can see anything at all but what you would want to do uh, if you want to go with something a little more realistic in the shadow room is you're going to want to go uh, either towards the purples or blues and of course darken it down you want to do something like this instead of a solid black uh, the filter should be on none by default and you can see just how sharp those shadows are those shadow areas uh, i'm going to go ahead and just tweak this a little more i'm going to tweak the alpha of it What I'm going for here is kind of tweak out. I'm going, going for more, a little more on the purple side. <clears throat> there you go. So the filter is none by default. And as you can see, as you tweak this, the shadows kind of get softer as we go. And the filter smooth by default is going to be zero. You could go up to something like a five just to make it a lot smoother. And this is basically just going to get you a much softer shadow. So if we were to run this now and take a look, all right, awesome. We're kind of getting there. We can see our objects uh, light up. We have this kind of shadow being cast on there, and 
You can see this rock here is really casting a shadow, which is a little interesting at the moment, but we're not done yet. So we can go ahead and continue on. We take a look. Let's see. What do we have here? Now, you might notice that this is getting a little on the bluish side. Uh, once we've turned our energy here up, if you've turned yours up. And the way we can get rid of that is actually quite easy. We just come on over uh, to our section here. So if we turned our energy up, all we have to do is turn our color up uh, some more. I'm just going to grab that and just keep pulling it over out towards the edge more. And if we zoom back out, we can see, there we go. That bluish color is now completely gone. And we could take a look at that in, well, in game, all right? All right, so we can see that going along there. And again, we can see this rock here doesn't really have any shadow, uh, whereas everything else uh, seems to. So I wonder if I uh, disabled that. All right, so what I did there is I just happened to change mine uh, by mask level. Uh, on that so on your light occluder you're gonna have an occluder light mask and you can see we have all these uh, numbers here all these layers that we could put it on and you, if you want that to interact with your light <clears throat> you're gonna match that with if I go to uh, my light here uh, we can see right down here in visibility we have things like our light mask here Now with that light mask, if we go ahead and change that too, you might be tempted into thinking that, of course, this one, what it would have to do, it makes sense, right? It's kind of, it kind of goes with that visibility, uh, but if we actually take a look, we see that shadow is still there, so that doesn't actually affect that in any way. Um, so if you actually wanted to change that, we would actually go up to uh, the shadow section, right? And we would put that on, say, two. And now we can see that those objects are not casting any shadows because this light is on, basically it's on layer one and the shadows are being cast, are only being affected by lights on layer two as far as shadows go. All right. So I go ahead and set that back to one. We should see that now being affected. All right. Now, if you're having problems with creating these, Looters. I'm going to go ahead and just run through one real quick for you. All right, so we go on up to our scene. Hit the plus. Come on in, form a search. Grab a light occluder. And we can see we have this little uh, triangle here. That's perfectly fine. It's just telling us that we need a polygon. So with that one selected, we can head over to our inspector, occluder new occluder open that up and now we can just go onto our scene anywhere um let's go with uh let's go with this sign up here i don't believe we have anything here so i can go ahead and i can just start clicking and draw this polygon out all right and i'm just i'm just going with something rough it's perfectly fine and i've sealed that off and you see it's gotten dark so now that object is going to cast shadows. So I can come out and I can see a light mask. It is on layer that uh, occluder layer one. Fantastic. So if I were to run this now, I should now cast a shadow on that sign. As you can see, we do. All right. So if you're having an issue with creating your occluder, you just can't figure it out. Um, that's all you have to do. And like I said, if you're doing this with a tile map, that should be automatically created for you. All right. Now, let's go ahead and... Uh, no, let's not quite jump in yet. I'm going to go ahead and show you this because we can actually use these for uh, street lights. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn these ones on. They're exactly the same. The only difference is my player has this solid uh, texture. 
and what I'm using here is light 2 which as you can see here is a nice faded out gradient and if you do that you're gonna have a much softer light All right so if I come down we can I can take a look at these lights I can take a look at shadow and I can see they're interacting with layer 2 And if I want it, I can have it cast my shadows on layer one and layer two. But we're going to have a little bit of a, a issue in this case. Uh, just a small thing. But that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my layer. Or not my player. Let's go to my rock. Go to my light occluder. And I'm just going to set it back to layer two for this example. And if we take a look. Turn my light off. Okay. Um, we can see, uh, if we look closely here, we can see this uh, shape being cut out of it. And we can see that easier if I just kind of crank up the light here. Alright, so I went ahead and just kind of cranked uh, that light up. And now we can see that that is, of course, interacting with that layer. Oops. Now, Something I want to note here as well is if our player, uh, for example, has a light occluder on it and we have a light of our own, um, in this case, uh, we're perfectly fine. We're not causing any issue. Thing here. All right, cool. So we're having no issue there. And if we were to be having an issue where our occluder is uh, interfering with our light, uh, we can just go down here on our player's light or the torch that we're carrying, whatever canvas item go to show behind parent. Um, and that would uh, solve that little issue for us. Uh, so that's going to be a, just a little dependent there. Uh, if you are having an issue, you can go ahead and try that. All right. Now for this actual torch flicker uh, that we're having, we can go into our script. And this script is just sitting on my light. So this would be on maybe your torch. And we can see I just have a... Well, we can ignore follow mouse house for text thing, and we see I just have a boolean for is torch. And this is basically just going to know whether or not it's lit. So I, really, I could call this is torch lit. It'd be a little more accurate. It's fine. So it's false by default and on ready. I'm setting it to true, so I'm lighting my torch. I'm calling my torch function. And my torch function is basically saying if our torch is not lit, we're just going to exit out of our function and end it. Otherwise, if our torch is lit, we're going to create a new tween. We're going to connect the finished signal. And then we're going to tween uh, one property, which is going to be scale of our light, right? Scale of that texture. And I'm changing it from 1 to 0.8, so I'm shrinking it by 0.2. And I'm taking 0.2 seconds to do that shrink. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain another tween property. And what chain me does is as soon as this property has been tweened, then we're going to move on to the next item in the chain. It's going to be this tween property. And we're going to tween the scale uh, back up to one. So back up to full size. And that's also going to be 0.2 seconds. Now, of course, the smaller you make this number, the quicker that flicker is going to happen. So, for example, we come in here and we could say uh, 0.05. Now, be a little aware, we're going to have a, some slight fla uh, flashing here uh, when looking at it. And we have our function for tween finished from when we connect our signal. And that's basically just going to say, uh, if our torch is still lit, we're just going to call torch again. All right. So if we were to run that, you can go ahead and you can see that's a really fast flicker. Uh, and the one that you saw at the beginning is a 0.2. So now you could take this script and stick it on any torch in your game. 
and you'll be perfectly fine if you want to be able to tweak this externally of course you can just come in you can export it and now you can come in and decide whether or not it's a lit torch or not just by changing your one property but yeah there we go that's how you can go ahead and create yourself a little light a little torch that your player can be carrying around and how to create uh, the shadows for it to interact with your environment all right uh, that's it take care have yourselves a good one hopefully this wasn't confusing and i'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and let me know if you preferred uh the normal zoom that i've been doing in the videos or uh using the windows zoom to kind of take advantage of just doing this on the fly like this all right so go ahead uh let me know and i'll see you guys next time